Hello friends and welcome to this Thursday morning, or really Thursday anytime, uh, Lenten devotional from our author uh, Tom Wright. I'm David Fullen, the pastor of the Jurgens Chapel United Methodist Church and the Drakesboro United Methodist Church here to uh, help you in our time through this Thursday devotional. Let's pause for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us. We pray now that this morning or whenever each viewer has time to stop in and recharge, we pray that you will meet us. We thank you that you have met us at every point of need and you are making us each day into more and more of your image in Christ. We pray that we would forget ourselves as we throw ourselves into your service. In the name of Christ, amen. I'd like to uh, have you turn to Matthew 21, verses 23 through 46. And in our reading this morning, we'll read verses 33 through 45. Matthew 21, beginning with verse 33. Listen to another parable. Jesus went on. Once upon a time, there was a householder who planted a vineyard, built a wall for it, dug out a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he let it out to tenant farmers and went away on a journey. When harvest time arrived, he sent his slaves to the farmers to collect the, his produce. The farmers seized his slaves. They beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than before, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They'll respect my son, he said. But the farmers saw the son. This fellow's the heir, they said to themselves. Come on, let's kill him, and then we can take over the property. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now then, when the vineyard owner returns, what will he do to those farmers? He'll kill them brutally, the wretches, they said. And he'll lease the vineyard to other farmers who'll give him the produce at the right time. Did you never read what the Bible says? said Jesus to them. The stone the builders threw away is now atop the corner. It's from the Lord, all this, they say, and we looked on in wonder. So let me tell you this. God's kingdom is going to be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the goods Anyone who falls on this stone will be smashed to pieces, and anyone it falls on will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew he was talking about them. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Here are some thoughts from Dr. Wright. I was taking a service in a local church when this passage was the second reading. Over at the side of the church was a family with a three-year-old boy who appeared to be playing with his toys, taking no notice of the service. But when the reader finished this parable about the wicked tenants who beat up the owner's messengers and finally killed his son, there was a momentary pause, and in the silence, the boy's voice stood out loud and clear. That's not a very nice story. Well, no, it isn't. 
And that's part of the point. We come to the Gospels hoping and imagining that they are going to be nice that we will find a Jesus who tells us it's all right. We don't have to worry. Nobody's going to get hurt. No one will even be cross. But with the world the way it is, if God doesn't get cross about it, he is not a good God. And if he doesn't do something about it, sooner or later, he's quite simply not God. The whole New Testament is based on the belief that in Jesus of Nazareth, the living God took the world into his hands at last in judgment and mercy. When I say took it into his hands, there are various different meanings there which have to be explored in due course. Tragically, it was God's own people, Jesus' own people, Israel, that stood in the way of what God was wanting to do. In the Bible, the vineyard is often used as an image for the people of Israel. In the old prophets, the vineyard has often gone wrong, gone wild, rebelled against its planter. In this story, though, it's the tenants who are at fault. The vineyard itself seems to be God's inner purpose, Israel, as the bearer of his saving plan for the world. As in the Old Testament, God sent prophets to his people, but his people refused to listen. Now, at last, he is sending his son. And his people, instead of listening, think that if they kill the son, they can have the vineyard for themselves. This is at the heart of it. Jesus' challenge to Israel that it was time at last for God to become king and that this was happening through him and his work was too much. As with the young man two chapters earlier, his contemporaries couldn't match the total demand of God's kingdom. And to explain the result, Jesus called on other biblical images. The stone that won't fit the wall but will go nicely at the very top. Psalm 118, verses 22 and 23. And the stone that will crush all opposition. Daniel 2, verse 34. The English words sun and stone are very similar. In the same way, the Hebrew words ben for sun and Eben, stone, are very much alike. The rejected son, like the rejected stone, will become the Lord of all and judge of all. This parable is Jesus' own explanation for what was happening. Once again, telling cryptic stories is the only way you can really say, or sorry, telling cryptic stories is the only way you can say the really important things. As we watch, we find ourselves drawn into the action. We are part of the group that don't want the owner to, over, to take over control of his own vineyard. Are we? Are we the part of the group that don't want the owner to take control of his own vineyard? Would we rather keep it for ourselves? Today, our prayer, Almighty God, give us grace to produce the fruits of your kingdom, that we may celebrate your Son, the chief cornerstone of your new temple. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, brothers and sisters, until we meet again. Amen.